Hi. We're Black Dolly Murder. And you're watching. Like, do you think you've improved, or are you ever 100% satisfied with with your albums? Uh, from my standpoint, I'd say, uh, you know, this is the closest of, uh, you know, the perfect album that we've ever made. And, uh, you know, each time we go back to do it, we have more tools, more knowledge, you know, uh, more, more years of touring under our belts. And, um, you know, it's gotten... Uh, uh, it, going into the studio has gotten a little bit easier as far as like relaxing, you know, in the early days uh, I remember being pretty uh, pretty hyped up going into the studio, being pretty uh, overwhelmed, you know. But now, um, you know, we just have uh, really good players in the band, we've got people that are experienced in the studio and, you know, I don't know. How many fans do you guys see a night? Uh, it really depends. You yeah, know. it's a pretty, pretty big window. <laughs> yeah. I like what's the largest um, amount of people that you guys have seen in a club? Like, club, um, 1,200 ish, I guess. Uh, uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, in the states. And what were you guys headliner, or was it? Um, yeah, I think so. So, I mean, the metal fest. Yeah. Would you uh, prefer to play on a big stage, like where there's a fence so that people can't get too close to the stage, or is it more like a, maybe a small club where everybody can get up close? Small club, closer fence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, big barriers are kind of a bum out, I think, for every kind of band, you know, just to be super far away from the, the person in the front row, you know, I'd like to be able to reach out and, uh, and touch them, you know, if I felt necessary or inclined. You know, I just think it's more intimate, gets people more riled up when they can be a lot closer to you. You know, I'd prefer if uh, if fans could stage dive and, you know, do whatever they want and not have to worry about security, you know, and uh, I think in a lot of cases, kids are smart enough to not, you know, yeah. go too out of control when, uh, but uh, there are some circumstances people where they need to People who can't help themselves, yeah. they just gotta <laughs> mess up the show somehow. A bit. In, the, in those cases, we'll, we're glad to see security, you know. So it's interesting for us because, you know, when you go to a show, you look at security as the enemy, you know what I mean? Like as a, as a, a music goer. And then uh, for us, you know, we oftentimes, you know, depend on security. So kind of learn to see both sides, I guess. Do you guys see any differences between the American fans and the German fans? Or the uh, European fans in general? Like, is there maybe one side more brutal than the other? Or? Um, I don't know, uh, I think it maybe uh, crowds are a little bit more stiff over here. It takes a little bit more to get people uh, going. I think maybe that has to do with their amount of exposure to uh, this kind of music and how, uh, you know, extreme metal is a bit more readily available over here, you know what I mean? So, uh, so kids are spoiled, you know what I mean? They've seen a lot of cool bands and, you know, they're lucky. You know, kids in the States, um, Especially like when you get into the more brutal death metal, more brutal than, than us, you know. But uh, there's not many tours, not many uh, festivals and things like that you know, of that nature in the States, you know, so I don't know. Would you guys say you like to tour more in America or in Germany? Because um, there was a band that said in America you have to pay for everything when you go there. And in Germany, American bands, it's just like holidays for them. Uh, well, I guess they didn't realize that we had to buy plane tickets over here and, you know, all the rental <laughs> stuff and, uh, I don't know, it's just as expensive to come over here. It really it, is. It's cool, though. I, I think you don't have to get a visa to come into Germany, though. Yeah, that's uh, cool. And that's nice. Helpful. So. I think um, Germany is the closest to home out of, you know, any of the countries over here as far as, like, uh, you know, fan responses and just, um, you know, just accommodations and things like that, and people, 
it just seems the most like in what we're used to, I guess, you know what I mean? So we like it over here. Okay, so do you guys have a favorite band t-shirt at home that you would wear all the time? I definitely do. I'm like a band shirt kind of junkie, like uh, collect them, buying them all the time. I have some that I won't wear because I'm afraid they're going to get like ripped or damaged on tour. And uh, I think the best one I have is an entombed uh, left hand path shirt. And uh, it's an original from 1990. And a kid from Italy gave it to me. Traded, I traded like a reprint of the shirt for it, and uh, that was really cool. And uh, that's a very cool shirt. And you? <laughs> uh, most of the stuff I really like, I uh, grew out of and can't wear anymore since I'm so fat. But uh, I got this really cool extra large tie dye rush shirt uh, from a concert, and uh, that still fits. So. Uh, I, Maybe it's my current favorite, I don't know. Okay. I don't wear it outside the house. It's tie-dye. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next question is, do you guys know any German words at all? Mutis Milch. <laughs> do you have any German words? Uh, well, <laughs> Kippen sie grass. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys go around asking that on concerts? <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to today, actually. <laughs> I, I don't feel comfortable saying any more of the bads. Yeah, you guys are exploiting us right now. Yeah. <laughs> I knew this guy that said shies of futzen all the time. <laughs> and maybe he'll be around later. I don't know. Do you know what those words mean? Uh, I believe it's shit, shit cunt. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting well, combo there. Lovely. <laughs> we don't say shit cunt in the States. But we're not together necessarily. No, we just say shies of futzen. Shies of futzen. <laughs> So we're coming to our last two questions. One is a fan question, and the other one is just a random question. Yeah. Hey, you guys have tattoos. What was your first one? You got some painted men right here. Let me tell you. This is my first tattoo. It's a carcass tattoo from the Tools of the Trade EP, and it made my mother cry. And I had to call her like on the way home and warn her, you know, so she could like blow her top for a while before I got there. And. Uh, she allegedly cried the next day at work too. Did you get it? Yeah, I don't know. She's not like religious or anything, so it's not like one of those uh, "you ruined your temple" kind of things. Or maybe I don't know. You know, she just just thought I was better than that or something. But now she's pretty much over it. You know, I, I you know I've got a few now, and uh, the Harvard one. She was like, "That's the only one you got that makes any goddamn sense." So I get heartburn and indigestion all the time, you know, when you get like acid coming back up. Yeah. Brutal. You're like Kaji, right? Yeah, yeah. I can't rip it out right now. It's kind of in a intimate place, but you know, I see. it means big hate. It says big hate <laughs> big in hate. Japanese. <laughs> and uh, I don't think my mom knows about it. It's fine. Nah, hopefully she doesn't ever have to identify my naked body, because that'll be a bummer. <laughs> okay, so our random question is, if you were stuck on an island with the whole band, no food, nothing, just you guys, who would be the first person you, you guys think you would eat to survive? Wait, who? Who would you eat first? In the band? Or? Yeah. Yeah, because you guys are the only people on the island. Like, hey, you eat, okay. I was going to say it's Shannon, point. but... It's really yeah, awesomely. I don't know if you can, if that's good eating or if I would it. See, that's yeah. That, you don't want, you don't want that. I would choose Bart because he's got that like, he's got that Latino butt. You know what I'm talking you about? Might like, spicy Latino a butt little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what I'm talking about. He's got a little bit of that, and you know that's where the good meat is. At least that's what I learned from that movie Alive. <laughs> Those soccer players, yeah. you know, had to eat each other's butts. <laughs> they, they made it. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with Bart. I'll, I'll buy a week with his ass. Okay, so that was our last question. Thank you for doing this. Perfection and high five. <laughs>